I wanted to organize this session with, with uh, these uh, two guys because I think that uh, the experience is uh, really very interesting, uh, mainly for the young people. No? So these last years uh, around Barcelona, there is a quite important uh, creation of new companies related to technology, bio stuff mostly. And uh, these two guys are really contributing to generating new economies. No? And since both, uh, say, arise from our community, yeah, so both uh, studied in our universities, did, did, the, did the PhD around this country, then they travel abroad, uh, they come back and they are doing many things. I really think that uh, what they will tell us today is really new for all us and will be really very interesting uh, discussion, I think. Huh? So first of all, I would like to thank you both for accepting this invitation. And the plan is that uh, they will uh, present briefly what they are doing, their activities, uh, their evolution, career, success, and not that success. Huh? And then we will open the discussion. Okay? So, who starts? Maybe I'll start with Mike. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Carlos, for the uh, kind introduction and for the invitation. Actually, we'll sure. this was supposed not to be revealed yet, but anyway. So, <laughs> um, so just the first, uh, maybe a brief introduction about myself. I, I did the PhD here with actually with Javier Luque, who's sitting in the audience, and then Modesto Rothko as well. And then uh, I moved to uh, Cambridge to work in a drug discovery company. And, and later I came back here as an ICLEA researcher, so I have my own research group focusing on the development of methods for computer data and drug design. But my interest has always been to apply those. And I think that's, that's a key thing. If, if you have, um, you know, if you want to do applied things or, you know, then you, you sort of get into this area, this parallel world, uh, walls uh, of, of industry because that's what you want to do. So it, I don't think everybody has to do it, but uh, you know, if, you, if your motivation, if you have a motivation, then it's good that you can actually explore these um, parallel walls. And um, it's interesting because in, in the academic environment, usually transfer of knowledge seems to be more of an afterthought. Um, you know, usually you read the, on the papers always the introduction, why this will cure cancer or this and that, but then, in reality, they don't care about it. It's just, you know, it's, it's the science of the, the, you know, whatever they, the problem they are investigating that they are worried about it. But sometimes uh, you can transfer that. And it's good that actually we have this uh, session here, and I really thank you for that, that, uh, you know, we actually uh, at least think about it um, in, in some ways. So um, I think what we, I would like to say is that, yeah, parallel universes do exist, so maybe I can, can I control that? That's it. Okay, that's it. Do parallel, they are indeed <laughs> parallel universes. They have very little in common, actually. It's not that they are, one is harder than the other or one is easier than the other. Um, sometimes you may, you know, um, I think what, what, what you have is a very steep learning curve if you want to explore the other area. Um, don't get fooled into thinking that it's going to be easy. Um, and, you know, sometimes, especially in the U.S., you, you hear this, you know, it's, it's actually uh, so many people with uh, so much money that they don't know what to do with it, and they really need to invest in something, and that's true. But getting the money and making out of it something is actually very difficult. So, um, and, and because we come from a different environment, we are new to the field, we are at the disadvantage in that sense. So we have to learn a lot. And I pers personally, for me, what is more difficult is maybe uh, the communication. What you have to communicate in science and what you have to communicate as a businessman has nothing to do. And that's, that's uh, quite um, an interesting uh, aspect of it. Um, and I, maybe I'll, I'm just giving some ideas that maybe we can discuss later, right? The other thing that I, I struggle with sometimes is these dual appointments uh, where, you know, you are the head of a... Uh, research group and you have to publish papers and then you also have this other uh, business and, and, and in theory actually the European Commission says that, um, that um, mobility should be rewarded uh, not just 
geographical mobility, but also intersectorial mobility or industry uh, academic mobility. But that's, I think at the moment it's tolerated, which is probably better than it was before, but it's not really rewarded. So the reward has to be your own, right? You have to like doing this other thing. So um, it's always this question is, is it worth it? Um, so I think it's a, you know, it's a personal perspective. The, the other day I, I was in a conference and I was really astonished to hear from a science scientist in front of a scientific audience that he said, literally, I like science, but I like money better. And, and I thought, you know, he's, he's got balls clearly to say that. But <laughs> the thing is he had a very clear motivation and that's his motivation to actually do something else. Um, so if you have that motivation, then you have to do it. Um, it might be not money, like, you know, maybe uh, doing something that you think it will contribute to society, but you have to have this, this motivation. Right, so the other thing is, once you have decided that you want to go into this uh, parallel universe, you should then decide what type of business. And there's a lot of uh, different things that you could do. You could do software, and it has some problems and uh, some advantages. Maybe we can discuss that also during the, the, the uh, during the, later in the discussion. Um, one thing for me that is particularly difficult is in making software, apart of from the competition that you have, is how you embed this, uh, the, the implicit knowledge and the good practices that you have in your lab in, in a piece of software. So that's, you know, uh, Alphonse has a lot more experience on that, so maybe we, something is interesting. Um, then if you do service, what you find is that we usually say, well, you know, I have the best method, so it's going to be a competitive advantage. Well, it's the best computational method. And then you go out there and you find that they actually solve the problem by other means. So um, it, that's also a humbling uh, lesson usually, that the fact that you're the best doing computational methods doesn't mean that I actually you have something that is valuable in itself. So that's another thing that you have to explore. You have to see what are the real needs of, of the community. And then finally, the other option is to do products. Um, you know, to actually go something and try to, to sell it. And that's, that's the highest risk uh, option. Um, and I like it because it it's also gives you a lot of scientific complementarity. You do things if you try to develop a product that they are different than if you could do, do a software, for instance. That you, something you cannot do in your lab. So that's an interesting thing. And then, um, just finally, you have to be aware that at some point during this company, you will have to traverse the uh, death valley and you know, money will run out and you will be vulnerable, vulnerable and it will be a difficult time. So you have to plan ahead actually and that's, that's I guess is the key question when you create a, a company, how you will be able to actually not just start to have value, but you know, when you're in the desert you know, carrying some gold but you have no water, then uh, how do you end, uh, reach the end of the, the, desert, the desert, right? So that's, that's something that's really difficult. Um, maybe, um, you know, every company has different expectations and different things. So at Minorix, we, um, My, Minorix, Minorix my, is, the Minorix. Company, is the company that I, uh, I co-founded with uh, two other guys and uh, we had two, actually two, the idea is that we would have two business lines one, we would do repositioning of drugs, so we start closer to the market, and the other one would start from zero, new molecules that would eventually become drugs, and because the trajectory is much longer, you actually hope that this will reach the market and then um, help you with this, um, you know, succeed in this difficult period. Um, now, what is interesting is that you may have so, so much success in one site, that actually um, um, the other the one you have one product that is already in the market, and the other research line is like you know it's so far away, you know that, that do we really need it? And then obviously when these decisions are taken, you're no longer the owner of the company because you have had to uh, sell you know the, the, your shares to other people who put money to take you uh, along the route. So anyway, it's uh, always interesting times. Um, so that's, that's my, my, my explanation. I think we can then discuss uh, any particular thing that you would be interested in. 
Thank idea you. of Fons. Yeah. Fons' experience is completely different. No? Yes. He's not like an, an academic anymore. I'm not academic, so I'm only business. Yeah. So I'm only working with business. My career, my scientific career is shorter than yours. Uh, as introduction, I... Okay. No, it's not possible to close it. So I... Now? I did my PhD in, in SIC with Professor Felipe Mercedes, which is here, and also Jordi Villa, that's not here. And I was working with mainly with modeling enzymes. Okay, working with, uh, with proteins and doing some bio stuff, but from a more very computational point of view. It means understanding how the reaction was were doing and, and so on. After it, I moved to a <coughs> more applied uh, group, working with computational drug discovery. It means to apply all the stuff that I learned during my, post, my, PhD, my, my PhD on something applied to deliver drugs to the market or to start working with uh, potential drugs. It was fine because I was working in a, in a group that was very focused on computational part of this development, but also working with several projects of other universities and also companies, uh, mainly related with European projects. It means that we designed some compounds. There were a group of chemists that they uh, synthesized the molecules and biologists assigned them. It was very nice because it allowed me the possibility to <coughs> understand all the circle and also identify the, the, the weakness of, of this problem, what, what you can find problems and, and this. Uh, I was happy with it, but I saw that this kind of career, this academic career, it was not for me. Because I like to do something, I like, I enjoy with the work, I'm not workaholic, but almost. But I prefer to work with something more applied and don't to be worried about this paper, about this review, about this patent and this pattern and so on. I prefer, now I'm worried about money, about my team, about competitors, but it's a different kind of worry. So in 2011, I decided to found MindAbyte, uh, for, mainly for this reason to say, I like science, I like applied science, I have some knowledge, and I think that the best way to return this knowledge to the society is to found a company and to provide services with our knowledge to these companies and also to these uh, scientists that need to work on drug discovery. It's very focused on the drug discovery. Uh, and I founded MindAbyte, only two words about MindAbyte. So we are a bioinformatics company working with drug discovery, as I said, computational drug discovery, at the beginning, it was a consultancy company. By, I was alone at home doing small projects for mainly academic researchers, uh, biologists. And then we decided to open to other fields, so we're working with computational chemistry. And now we are also integrating some new approaches like artificial intelligence, big data in cloud environments. And we'll provide services and also products because we have a software platform that software a service that run on the cloud and all scientists can manage it paying for use okay uh, I decided to found this company 2011 and I found the first uh, death of ballet in only some months because I was able to, to sell some projects very small projects mainly to academic groups that they have some potential targets but they don't have more, didn't have money to develop molecules for these targets and with computational approach, we could uh, make this process shorter and provide them some potential candidates, and they should uh, say this. It, it, it was easy. But I have this. I was able to survive alone, but it was not my, day, my idea. <coughs> when I founded the company, I had no idea about business. So I, I remember I went to Barcelona Activa, which is a service provided by Barcelona City Council to entrepreneurs, and they talk about the business plan. At the beginning, I said, I don't know what's the business plan. I know what's the paper, I know my calculations, I know what can I do with them, but I know, don't know what's the business plan. So the first problem was to understand this. It was easy. Uh, and then I started working, but the first de uh, death valley was when I had some clients, but it was not possible to grow. I wanted to recruit some people to try to do something different. It was in 2011, 2012. It means there were no money. I went to some banks, saying no, their money because you don't have track record in the business. Uh, going 
finally decided to open a very small financial round, getting, getting first investors. Then I had some students from, master, uh, from some master's degrees, and we started working on it. Uh, we had some clients, consultancy, but there were more companies doing the same. Now in Barcelona, I think there are five or six companies offering consultancy, ser consultancy service for computational drug discovery. And in 2013, with the student that we had, it was a student only, uh, we decided to make something different and we started offering, uh, using our specialty with, with working in, on the cloud. Because we, um, the company at the beginning was on, in my apartment and I had no computers and I was working in, in a cloud environment. And we decided to start offering some software over the cloud and also offering cloud services to potential clients. It means most of you are working with computational chemistry. Maybe you have your, cl your cluster in, in your university or your institute. But when you go to a uh, wet chemist or biologist, maybe they need to make some molecular dynamics or some dockings, but they don't, need, they don't have infrastructure and they don't need it. And we started providing it. It was not bad. And, but finally, the last change was two years ago when we decided to put all the, plat all the software in a platform. And now we are in a good, money, a good moment, which is also delicate because we are in the middle of the second Death Valley. It's because we have a product, we're able to sell it, so we have clients. We have the main office here in Barcelona, in the Barcelona Science Park. We also have an office in Copenhagen. We have some clients there. We have a person working there. But we need to go faster developing the software because there are some competitors that start doing the same. The key point for the software is, is that it's a mixture of computational chemistry plus artificial intelligence, and also it's in a cloud and SaaS environment. It means that it's a total new, uh, new business model that is more focused as game for wet chemists and biologists. But we have this product, we start having some clients, but some competitors are starting working on it. It means that we have to go faster, developing, to be able to sell it faster. But when we go to meet some clients, they say, okay, it's interesting, but you don't have enough track record to trust you. And additionally, uh, we like your platform, but we also want to do this, this, this. Okay, but I need money to do this, but I don't have enough clients. It, it's a kind of circle that it's very difficult to, to leave it. The good point is that now we have closed a new financial round of 300,000 euros, and now we have more money to still developing it. The main problems, I say that I, I leave academia because I was not totally happy with it, uh, but now our main problems are to maintain the team. I'm talking about a team of 60 people that were working at Mindabyte plus one guy working in, in Copenhagen. We have to be worried about the money, like you, but uh, I'm paying directly the salaries every month. At the end of the month, I have to connect to the bank and say, okay, I have to transfer this money, which is a lot of money. We have to be worried about the strategy of the company. It not only, it's not only scientific strategy, so I'm lucky because I have a very good scientific staff with the scientific director that's managing everything. But you have to be worried about the strategy in terms of science, in terms of, sci of business, also in terms of this balance between consultancy and product or software. Be worried about the future, so you, from the very beginning, so that I don't want to have a, a small consultancy company working from a small office here in Barcelona. We aim to do something bigger. Uh, <clears throat> it's a major problem that we have. I said that we, I moved. To, to business, and I'm working focused on business, but <clears throat> we are not totally close to academia because we are very open to this. So sometimes when we go to visit some universities or some potential clients in academia, they say, no, you are a company, you are the bad sides of the, of the science. But it's not true. So we help this paper that he said, uh, Xavier said that this, so this uh, <clears throat> studies will solve the cancer. Maybe it will not solve the cancer, but we'll help them to do it. And for this guy, um, for this reason, <clears throat> sorry, we are very open to academia. So we are a business, but we have two doc industrial doctorates with different universities. We have FP7 projects. We have H2020 projects. We have ITNs. We also have more open collaborations that are not in a, in a specific project, funded project. It's only to say that we are the bad size of science. A lot of people say it, but we, we don't think it. Okay, we think that we can complement scientists from academia to put their science 
in the market, or at least to make its science applied. It means that maybe we can go to meet a biologist team that they have a specific target that if you are able to block this target, you will be able to cure Huntington disease, for example. But this group, but this group will publish this information about the target and you will forget it. So our idea is to go to this group and say, okay, maybe we can make a computational approach, designing some compounds or selecting some compounds for uh, drug details in the market or from commercial databases, and then you'll be able to make something better, go further on your, on your research. And it's more or less the thing that I, I wanted to explain about us. So. Okay, thank you. Some provocative ideas. I think the, the session is open for questions. Hans. Yes, um, a question about IP. If you're coming from the academic world, I can presume that. <coughs> My question is about IP. If you're coming from an academic world, um, the research that you're doing, the service that you develop, the technology that you develop, um, is partly owned by the university because yeah, you have a contact with the university. So in your case, uh, how was it dealt with? Uh, do you own all the IP or is it shared with the university? Or, uh, is, I think it's important with your investors as well. They want full control of, over the IP. So, so yeah. the, um, from the economic perspective, that's not a problem per se. Um, what you do is you patent as an academic then it's owned by your own university. And then if you have a company, the company will uh, license that. So that mechanism is, is straightforward. Um, the difficult questions are not these ones. The difficult questions is, do you, is it worth patenting? Will the patent be, will be worth something? I mean, does it make sense to patent a method, a computational method in the US nowadays? It's not, it's, I mean, this, this is not uh, allowed anymore. Um, um, so that's, that's actually one of the reasons that um, with products, I think it's, it's better. So in, in our case, we apply the methods, we publish the methods, we don't try to patent them anymore. And we then apply those methods the best way we can. Um, and then if you have a product, in our case, it could be a small molecule that could, would hopefully at some point become a drug, or it could be a, you know, a molecule that is a catalyst or something like that. That's uh, intellectual property is much easier to handle because you know you can patent it properly. Um, but of course, if your so business is software or or something like that, then it would be useful as a for the business to actually have a patent that you say, well, I have a method that I have patent I have patent on. But it's not very strong. Um, but but from the logistics side, that's that's not a problem. I mean, I will add. I would like to add something. In our case, we don't have this direct, direct transfer because my affiliation is only with MindAbyte. But we have several collaborations with the universities, and the first thing that we put in all the agreements is depend, in some cases, the knowledge is from the university, and we'll have to pay some kind of revenues to the university. In other cases, we pay for the people. They can publish something, but the method will, will be for us. If there are different strategies to, to the show. And additionally, in terms of patentability, in our case, we cannot patent anything because we are developing software and algorithms. Maybe in the US we could patent something, but we say only try to protect it with uh, some stuff called uh, trade secret policies and these things. But we try to make arrangements in each case with each university. <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay, so I think that you're a good example because we, as a community, at least here in Spain, we have a problem about creating uh, industry, about transferring our students to industry. And you are, well, I congratulate you for your success. But my question is, uh, there is a learning curve for this because, well, Alphonse mentioned Barcelona Activa, but uh, do you go to business school or is it just self-taught or something you, so who tells you what to do, how to start? Because sometimes well, I have a student, well, we all have a students that they don't see clearly their future in academia because of their taste or, and, but then how, how do you start to make a company? So that's, could you give some advice, especially yeah. for the young people? In my specific, 
particular case, as I said, I started with no idea about business and I didn't know what was a business plan. I went to, in this case, for Barcelona Activa, for example, which is service from the Barcelona City Council. I think that almost all city councils has a similar service. And it's a good way to start. And as a vice, it's a good way to start, but the next advice is to have, or to, uh, to have people around you that could complement your knowledge. I mean, I had no idea about business, but the first person that entered working with me in the company, he was as, like a small investor and also an advisor, was a friend of mine that shared some PhD time with me, which you know a lot. <laughs> He's a, a computational chemist that now is working in a bank because he studied MBA and, and, and this, and he complemented my, my knowledge in this case. And now, I have to say that it's continuous learning cure because now, for example, we are growing, we are in a different level than at the beginning. I said we are a lot of people with a, a lot of very strategic items on the table, and we are trying to have <coughs> specific people. For example, we need to run business in the UK and in the Scandinavia, so we have people from the Scandinavia, both in the staff of the company and also in the board of the company. Uh, we have ex people that was working in AstraZeneca in the past as management position, for example, working for us. It's a way to complement. I, I would like to do an MBA, something like this, it should be funny, but I have not time, not money, and I try to complete it with other people. But I think the best way could be this. Uh, and also, it's not necessary to fund a company if you want to go to a company. A lot of open positions in company like us for people coming from academia working in computational chemistry. So we are continuously get people from, from it. Yeah, I think it's a good strategy. I think, you know, the summary is where there is a will, there is a way, but there have to be the will. And that's, that's I think, you know, the person who starts, you know, wants to, wants to get his hands, hands dirty on, on, on business. Uh, it's like actually being a, a PI, actually. You learn many things by making mistakes and, 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 you know, over the years then you realize how bad you did, were doing in the beginning. But, um, you know, the main thing is that you have to have this will. Yeah. You can pick up everything on the go. So mine is more a comment. Perhaps there is a question at the end. And uh, for example, in uh, our uh, doctorate, uh, Manuel Yanez is the coordinator of that doctorate, TCCM. There is a part of the training devoted to train people to get into business, okay? So that I think there are several universities now getting equipped with some structures, some suggestions, also from public authorities there are. And, but I think experiences like yours cannot be substituted by this. So one has to be ready to, to bet on himself and go on. The second point is that in some university activities there is, is applied the so-called prosumer attitude where the university becomes user and producer of some goods. A typical example is the European Chemist Thematic Network, in which the different university, universities act as test centers for electronic tests and so on and so forth. So that is something that perhaps is very, very little known. I mean, there should be some incentive, some way to push the universities and private companies to join together the efforts. Do you have any suggestion on that? Prosumer is a word that the European Union no, has yeah. officially. Um, I, I don't know the case in particular. I don't know if you have no. any particular comment. Um, so it's always this, this uh, where top down or up, uh, you know, bottom up thing. Um, I would say that um, you, once you have something that is, you think is valuable, then you have to actually invest time in trying to find if, if it is valuable, to know what is the reality of the industry, how you can actually exploit that. And, and, but the uh, partnership between um, academia and industry is extremely valuable, especially when you start. You don't want to, you know, this death valley. If you incubate something for a longer time in, in a network of groups or, you know, with public funding, the uh, European Commission has uh, funding specifically for that, then that means that when you finally release the product, it's more mature. Uh, or, or and you, you can 
shorten this this uh, dangerous uh, time. But, um, but there is yeah. so so. That's that's my my view. That it definitely collaborations and integration of different companies, different groups, different um, universities is uh, definitely of value. But you have in, in the end you have to know what is the reality of of the needs in the industry. Um, I don't know uh, if I could shed anything useful here. Yeah. But say, even if you have a perfect service solution or product, I mean, at the end of the day, you need to sell. And obviously, the two of you were successful there. And my perception is we had cases of, you know, students or even, you know, teams of students wanted to become independent, start a company. And sort of the, the difficult step is to actually acquire customers, you know, sell. And maybe in Switzerland, you know, we're sort of dominated by, you know, big pharma and, you know, big chemistry and, you know, they have their own networks, they have their own contacts. It seems to be difficult, you know, to, to, reach, to reach the customer. And, you know, how do you go about this and what... Maybe that's, that's your it's, trade that's, that's secret. Wow, well, it's the worst part of the business, to try to sell it. You have to sell it and you know that you have to sell it, you want to survive and you want to show that the company is working and the service or the product is, is interesting. We are, again, in a continuous learning curve or learning about how to sell. Because we changed from consultancy to software, to a specific way of software. The strategy that we have is to try to use the network as much as we can. So if you some, some contacts, we try to explode them with not burning them, but try to use them. Also, we used to go to several scientific conferences, but it means, again, budget, because if you have to go to a conference, you used to see the price, PhD students, this price. Academic, double. Company, three times or four times. It is very expensive. It means a lot of money to go there. There are strategies, so we have PhD students, so the PhD students sometimes went to this, this kind of conferences. But it goes to scientific conferences, and the other goal is to, to go to a very dark side part of the science, which is to go to trade shows. It means to go to trades where you have your booth to sell your products and all companies are doing the same and you have some meetings and you have to try to... Again, it's build the network, not make a sales directly. And finally, the other way is to build network by using collaborative projects. As I said, we are participating in several uh, European-funded projects and it allows us to make this network. Uh, we have to say that we are not selling pel uh, pens, we are selling science, and if you have to invest 5,000, 10,000, 30,000 euros buying something in science, you have to trust it. And we are trying to make all these things. Build a good reputation, having papers, having presentations in conferences, having good, good experiences, and also trying to get new leads from conferences, from network, from, from everywhere. And also, you have to have a good product, a good product, because at the beginning you say, okay, I'm unique, nobody else has it. You can go to Google and look for drug discovery, artificial intelligence. There are a lot of groups working on it, and not a lot of companies, but so many companies working on it. So it means that you are not unique, but you have to try to be not the best, but one of the best ones, having something very different and doing something very different than others. And then, Try, 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 and, and it's, it's the harder part of the, the business. Yeah, I, I agree that's the hardest, definitely the hardest part of the business. So my five cents there is also, I find it particularly difficult because you have different audiences. Sometimes you want to, you know, you have to go to a pharmaceutical company and you explain what you're doing to a, uh, all the scientists, and that's the nicest, the easiest part. But they may be not your customers. They will talk to the boss and say, you know, this is sound, this, is, this seems to work, we like it. But they don't take the decision often. And you also have to sell depending on your business model. If In our case, it's a product, so we need investors. So you have to sell not what you have, what you will have to uh, somebody who has to put the money there. So selling something that doesn't exist, uh, I mean, for scientists, is quite a, you know, is a, is a, is a leap. 
uh, is important. So that, that definitely is, is difficult. But the other thing is you cannot not start selling when you have the product. You have to start selling much earlier on. Because you may find that actually nobody is interested in your product. So when you have the idea, you have to start selling it. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, you know, people will tell you whether they are interested or not. And maybe you find that actually they are interested in something else that you could also do. So selling is, you know, is, is the core of a business, actually. And, yeah. and you have said something very interesting, and it's very important for scientific people. That we try, as a scientist, we try to publish something when it's perfect. In business, it's not the real case. So you have to try to sell something when it exists and it works. But not wait until it's perfect, because maybe you spend three years making the best perfect software to make a prediction of a specific target and blah, blah, blah. And finally, you go to the market and nobody is interested in it. Okay? So you have to have the good balance in developing and also selling it to get feedback from the market, because you have to sell it, and the best information provider is the market. It means your customers. May I? Yeah. Uh, I've never made a business plan, but, but I guess that a business plan for a software company, like ours, uh, should be easier to make, and the amount of money you could plan to need in the next years, much lower than a true chemical company. Uh, creating a true chemical company, producing and selling grams of products, uh, that is a huge amount of, of investment. But in any case, the investment is not uh, a low uh, number. Yeah? And uh, so both uh, have uh, mentioned that you got a couple of colleagues to create for the first time your company, and I know that Alphonse uh, started this uh, sort of crowd uh, founding projects too. No? So could you comment a bit of how much money I need and where the money is? <laughs> <laughs> the main problem is that you say, I will need this money, and when you have this money, you say, oh, maybe I need twice. Uh, I need more. But it's, you have to be careful about it. You have to write your business plan and try to follow it as better as you can. Because maybe you say, I need this money, and maybe you have this money and say, ah, oh, I have more money, I will buy this, this, this. No, you have to be careful with it. You have to have contingency plans. For example, now we close a round of 300,000 euros, as I said. We are expecting more, but we decided to close this because we, can, we cannot wait more time. Uh, it's always difficult to get money. At the beginning, as I said, I started with some friends, some colleagues, getting some, some more money at the beginning. We decided to jump to equity crowdfunding. It means that we open it to everyone, that everyone could invest, starting from 50 euros. I'm talking about two years ago. We get some money, and now we did it again. But no, we know that now we have to go to a different kind of investors, maybe like minorities going to big investment companies to, to get this money. But you have to be clear about your business plan, plan. Say, I want this money for this, this, this. And if an euro enter in your company, you have to go, you have to know where this euro will be invested. Exactly. Yes. So when, you create, when you create, you have to create a business plan. Um, I'm sorry, but you have. Then you, have, <laughs> then you it's, assume, it, the, and it's, then you assume the risk to define a strategy. Exactly. I guess, no? exactly. The strategy and, is the selling, presenting, And promoting. it's um, also not the, the easiest thing. I, I, and it looks a bit ludicrous. You, you get an Excel spreadsheet, and then you say, well, in three years' time, I'm going to make you know, this much money selling the product. And this figure is essentially made up because there's no way that you can actually predict how much you're going to sell in three years' time. But that gives you a framework that then allows you to uh, say, well, then I will be able to fund like two people for so, so long and so forth. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of, you know, creating castles in the sky, but, but you have to do that to then have a figure that uh, you have to aim towards. I have to say that Excel is the best tool because you can put Whatever you want there, okay? <laughs> you only have to show that it's possible now. <laughs> Last comment. If not, one possibility in technology actually is what we are seeing it's happening in the States, no? that uh, a small technological company suddenly is being acquired by Google for a huge amount of money. I think that this is also an option, isn't it? Yes, but we have to know that we are not in the States. 
<laughs> uh, no, Google, it, and Google is not interested no, no, in commercial no, no, chemistry. But it's, it's very important because uh, we have a competitor that is in San Francisco. It is called Atom Wise. It's a company that was founded in 2011, uh, like us. In 2015, they closed a financial. No, in 2014, they closed a financial round about uh, 200 case uh, euros, dollars, sorry. And in 2015, when we closed a financial round of 200 thousand euros, like them, the year before they closed the similar ones, about $6 million, because there is a lot of money there. And they can go faster, and they have more opportunities. So uh, I attended in May uh, a trade show in, in Boston. It's called BioIT. And it's amazing to see the money that is there. So investors don't put money everywhere. But if you have a good project, it's easier here than here to get money. I, we, we are in Europe, and additionally, we are in the south of Europe. But you need to open an office in the States. Uh, we do. But, <laughs> No, but if you open an office in the state and investors come to you, they will ask you to have the headquarters there. Okay? It's possible to reach money for international investors. So I think you, you, you did. But uh, you have to be careful that we, we are not in the state. So it's there. Everything seems to be easy. It's not always easy. But here it's more difficult than there because the limits. We are lucky in Barcelona because there are several funds that are starting, uh, mainly in bio. But it'll be nice in the future, but now we are a lot of years behind them. Yeah, we are definitely lean, right? The lean business is, uh, is, uh, is important, and definitely we have to be, we have to be very um, um, effective. But also like producing papers also, we have to, you know, we <coughs> compete with everywhere. It's the same thing. You compete with the whole world, but you have to, to do it with, um, you know, one-tenth of the resources. No comments, questions? If not, you want to say anything else? No, no. I really thank you for your participation. No, thank you for coming. Anything that they deserve an applause. Thank you.